I saw these on eBay and I thought I'd investigate them. They're cold cathode drivers that are used in large screen monitors where they use the long thin fluorescent tubes to backlight the LCD. And there's a couple of different types available, there's a few different types available. Uh, this one drives two tubes and this one drives four tubes. And uh, it's the circuitry is very similar amongst them all. It uses a generic switch mode driver chip and then it uses um, MOSFET packages with two MOSFETs in each package. And in this ca the case of this one, it uh, uses um, two of these MOSFET packages for push-pull. But uh, in other ones, like say for instance this one, it actually uses one with the two sections being used push and pull. Um, so th that's quite an interesting, it's fairly standard circuitry. There's also apparently some sort of feedback um, done, in the case of this one, that's done through these transistors, that every single tube goes back to these. And I think it's to detect probably an open circuit tube and kill the output if that happens. And um, on one of the units I disconnect a tube and it killed the power, and on, on another of the units I disconnect one of the tube as, uh, tubes and it, it didn't. So I don't know if that's regulation or just, um, actually I've just suddenly realised that this is the one that only seems to monitor one tube, so this is the one I've probably tested it on that did that, although the other um, only seems to monitor with one transistor as well. Not 100% sure about that. Anyway, um, to drive these you give them between 12 to 30 volts in the case of this one. I'm not sure if that's standard or not. But um, I've been supplying them with 12 volts, and they come with uh, a fairly standard connector, except this one, which you get a connector lead which has the same connector at both ends. But if you actually connect it the wrong way round, you can actually plug it on, and it connects polarity in reverse and could damage your circuit. So if you ever um, are changing one of these or playing about with one, make sure you check the back, because it does say, um, on the back it says VCC, VCC, Enable, adjust, ground, ground. And because this has got uh, this drives four tubes, it's got two power cables just to actually spread the load about. So it's worth just double checking that everything is lined up and uh, correctly before you power these up. The enable and the adjust, the adjust is used, it's the white wires that adjust, it's used to adjust the intensity, and enable is used to turn it on and off. Now, I got another one of these and I hooked some crocodile clips, uh, short leads to the output. Now the polarity, these aren't, the red and black aren't indicating polarity, they're just purely indicating the e each different tube. So I do have some neon tubes here, just ordinary um, short neon tubes. I say neon, technically speaking these are argon mercury tubes. And one of the things I thought when I bought these was, could they be used? Since they're designed to drive at high voltage, quite thin tubes, maybe they could drive quite long um, sections of um, standard tubing, because with neon, the thin, thinner the tube is, the higher the voltage required per sort of distance involved. So um, that's that. Uh, where's a lead? Where's a lead? There's a lead. And, coincidentally, this little module, also from China, which is designed for testing these supplies by putting the, allowing you to adjust the voltages to the enable and the uh, control pins. So I'm just going to plug that on there. Double check I've got that the right way around before I make a fool of myself. Plug in the connector. Turn it on the switch. And turn it on at the power supply. That helps. And bingo, we have illuminated neon. And it's quite interesting that um, you've got the two little potentiometers. I'm just trying not to touch these wires here because although it's high frequency, it could still give me a little burn or nip. So um, the potentiometers here, one of them controls the enable. So if I turn it, the tubes just cut out. It turns them off completely. Um, and the other potentiometer controls the intensity, so that's dimming down, that's bringing it up again. And I check the voltage uh, that comes out of these. All that's on the circuit board is two, potenti uh, two potentiometers and two resistors for the actual adjusting the voltage, and another resistor for this LED. And the voltage was um, zero volts um, for the intensity control made it 
bright and you can actually just leave that disconnected I found in some of them. Um, so the brightness control, the adjust control um, goes from bright at 0 volts to dim at 5 volts and the on off control, the enable, was off at 0 volts and as soon as it went above 1.5 volts it turned on. So I'm not sure if these are designed for logic level. I'm, I guess they are really designed for a, a standard 5 volt logic. But um, yeah, so I wondered how much length could be run these. Now the voltage at the moment, uh, I'm supplying them with this 12 volts and as you turn the voltage up the current drops. They are proper regulating circuits. And the current at the moment is 600 milliamps. So let's get another tube and piece it in. I'm just trying to find a suitable tube here. For a start, let's uh, try actual neon. Neon has a higher voltage than the argon mercury, so I'm just going to turn this little switch off. I'm going to put one of these tubes in here. And I'll try it driving neon. Yep, drives neon. Uh, so what happens if I put another tube in series with the neon? And this is where it might get a wee bit sort of clumsy and messy. So I'll just twist those wires very loosely together. Very loosely because I don't know if I could even get neon made to replace these tubes if I wanted it. I went through a huge neon spell some time back and got lots of tubes made in a place called the Neon Workshop in Glasgow by uh, the bender there, which was, uh, he was the neon bender called Nori. And it was uh, interesting times, a real, it was uh, quite enjoyable. It was, it was, we were doing a lot of neon at fairgrounds. So, yep, it'll run two tubes in series. At combined length, this is just over two feet. I'd say this is about two and a half feet, and that one is about two feet. So, uh, a mixture of neon and argon, in that case, totaling about the best part of three feet. Uh, sorry, not three feet, four and a half feet. So, actually, a modest length, and you can drive the two tubes. Um, so what happens if I disconnect a tube, apart from the risk of getting a shock? The whole lot cuts out and the voltage and the, the current in the power supply drops down to 13 milliamps. Connect it up, turn it off, turn it on again, and it resets. And the current, with the, uh, the more tubes you add, the higher the current goes. It's up to about an amp at the moment. And if you try extending it even further, it goes beyond a point the current starts dropping down again at limits. So then I thought... I'll go back to the simpler arrangement here, just to save space in the bench. So I'll just go back to this tube. Then I thought, so is there a way I can control this without actually having one of these little fancy modules? So I uh, made a lead up, and because the um, the enable had to be above zero volts. The enable pin, I just tied it to the positive rail. I don't know if that's an approved thing. I don't know if you can take it right up to 12 volts. I don't know if it's really just designed for 5 volts max. And likewise, the intensity, because you'd really just want full intensity all the time, the white one, I just tied to black. And if I plug this back in here and get my crocodile clips, put that to the positive, that to the negative, it drives it straight away, no problem. So I don't know if the, you're better sticking to a lower voltage on the enable pin, or if 12 volts is okay. But uh, the other thing I tried, I had this other module here. I'm just going to turn these off before I end up poking something. I had this other version, which is the, um, the version with the two um, MOSFET banks. Connected the leads up, and this one only, for a start, it, it has a different pinout. Now, that's good and bad in a way. It, the different pinout means that um, it had two different connectors on it, which means you can only really connect it one way around. But uh, the downside to that is, it's, although it's got the facility for it, it's not using the adjust uh, output. But having said that, I did tie the intensity control, the uh, sorry, the enable control, to positive and just uh, connected negative to the negative and it just burst into life as, as normal. So they're actually useful little things. You know, if you're into neon art or you have some neon tubes knocking about, 
not fluorescent tubes. It has to be the cold cathode type with just sort of one electrode on each end, uh, not the not the heating heated element. Then this is actually potentially going to be quite a useful little power supply because these are cheap, inclusive of shipping. You're getting these on online for a region of like three pounds or less. Um, and certainly if you think that this one can theoretically drive four sections of tubing, and that's actually pretty good. So yeah, th these are neat. I'm kind of enjoying playing around with these at the moment.